Um, yes, this is a very tough spot right here because it's right before lunch. Uh, honestly, I really hate talking before lunch because everyone is like kind of losing control, like losing concentration. And me too, I haven't eaten anything, so yeah. <laughs> so let's do it a little bit fast. So testing. Um, first question, anyone here ever done any testing in your app? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the right the right question is that anyone here ever not done anything to any test in the app? But um, you know it's kind of common question, so I revert it. So anyone that didn't raise your hand, um, you better go and do some testing. <laughs> so, but as usual, um, just a little bit about myself. So I'm Maya Chauvin, and I'm a senior software engineer in Microsoft. Uh, what I'm doing, Microsoft, yeah. Um, Technically, writing code, and that's why I do most of the time. So, uh, I'm also a um, book author, a uh, core maintainer of Storefront UI, a core component, a component library written for e-commerce in on Vue.js. Um, I'm also a GDE and media developer ex expert from Cloudinary over there. So, if you also if you want to grab some unicorn, go over there and grab it before I run out. <laughs> okay, that's enough for myself. Um, I found it just now, so I have to add it into my uh, to my slide the last minute. Uh, yeah, on Twitter today, I think for one of the talk, right? So yeah, test, 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 seriously, test. That's my talk. That's it. You can. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm sorry to say, but that's not 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 just my talk. That's someone else's talk. And um, so when we talk about testing. There's a lot of methodology, there are a lot of terms, there are a lot of approaches about that. And one of, I would say there's the three main layer of testing that most of us probably already know. So we have unit testing, we have integration testing, and we have end-to-end -end testing, which is like bottom-up approach, right? So anyone know what exactly is unit testing? Come on. Why so quiet? <laughs> I'm not judging you, you got it wrong. <laughs> well, technically, unit testing is, can you see what I'm saying right here? I hope. Um, so, unit testing is more like a bottom-up approach where you test the lowest level of your code, which is very isolated, very sim simple. You just test whether it works, if else, and so on. Um, Integration testing is after you already finished uh, testing your minor, minor lo logic. You combine them together, you put it in uh, like a function, like connect them together. So you do integration tests to make sure that they flow to one to another fluently and will not break anything in the middle and expect it. And then lastly, you go to end-to-end -end test, which of course, now you have all the flow going, but more of the flow you you're actually testing with mock data. You don't really think what is going on right there, out there for the user. You only say, okay, good, I can uh, send a request to the server and I expect to receive this back. Awesome, but this is mock data. How the user actually interact with your, with your applications, how would expect, well, how uh, it happen if your user click on this, what would be expected? That is end-to-end -end test. You're not testing unit tests on end-to-end -end tests, you're testing the whole flow, the layer and the view. And yes, it's a lot, because it's three different things. Just the unit testing would take around 100 tests, if you depend on your, how big your application is. But uh, 100 tests for unit testing, 100 tests for integrations and end-to-end -end tests, that's a lot, right? But we all know that testing is important, just like the, the screenshot before. You need to test. Um, why? Anyone know why testing is important? We always say testing is important. Come on, raise your hand. I can give you a unicorn if you, do, if you answer my question correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure that uh, whatever you build function properly as you plan. That's good, but why do you want to make sure that well, that work according to what you plan? You know, you can say that it's break, we can fix it, right? Ah, <laughs> see, the, this is the, sorry, you, you're right, you're right anyway, but uh, yeah, he's, you know, he knows how to work with project manager, 
But anyway, everyone knows that's an important. Well, anyone ever say this in your life as a developer? Ah. <laughs> Oh, the rest are like, I love testing, for real? Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, technically, this is me uh, a lot of time. Uh, when I start a project, I always say, oh, yeah, we need to have testing. Along the projects, I was like, oh, no, I hate testing. Why do I need to write tests? Especially when I have a PR that I finish a very long component, very big component, and I just want to merge it. But then the, the PR just didn't allow me to merge because I don't have testing. I don't, I don't have enough coverage. And that's why we have the dilemma of testing. What it means when you have a code base, and your code base is very big and complex. Let's say if you have a monorepo, that you have a lot of uh, different projects inside the monorepo. Um, some of them are c -sharp, some of them in JavaScript, some of them in Java. How are you going to test it? There's no single pair of tests, right? And then, when it's time to, to test your component, your project, your features, uh, if your projects have already a testing framework installed, you still need to know how to use it. Uh, if you don't have a testing framework, now it's time for you to choose a testing framework. And that comes to the next one. What the learning curve? I want to test, but uh, well, if anyone ever look at the test and framework documentation and say, what the heck? Like, I look at the document and, and like, how am I supposed to use this? I just want to do, expect this to be done, but the whole documentation of chess is like um, super long and scrollable indefinitely. indefinitely. So, yeah, that's another dilemma of learning. And then you come, when you finally learn how to write the test, you come to coverage, which is like a sweet barrier for your code, but it's also a bitter barrier because let's say your code have about um, 10, 10 lines, and then it's just telling you um, your coverage is 89%, why your barrier is 90%, um, how are you going to do 1%? Uh, you will just look at what test do I need to write in order to make sure that it's, it meets 90%. Why did, who the heck did, who the heck did uh, ever decide that this needs to be 90% coverage? It works. We don't need to test it. And lastly, writing tests take time. I'm sorry, time, not time. And, and when you write tests, you have to learn, you have to write correctly, you have to run the test to see the test writing correctly, and then you need to modify the test to make sure it works. Uh, yeah, all of this comes down to time consumption, and that time cost, time is money, and it's costly. So how do we overcome this testing dilemma? Anyone knows? Well, planning ahead and making things simpler. Well, the first part, planning ahead, I'm sure that every one of you know about it. In Google, in Stack Overflow, everyone talk about how to, how to plan your test ahead. You have test-driven um, approach, you have a different approach that making sure that you will write your test accordingly, coverage, but still it doesn't help. Um, and the, the last one, making writing tests simpler, not everyone knows and not every framework would give you that. So, but first, as usual, because this talk is about how to play it right, so I need to say how to plan your end-to-end -end test. Um, but we don't go too deep in that. Anyway, so in order for you to first, and foremost, in order for you to do any good testing, you need to plan, design the test case, you need to understand how your application actually works from end-to-end. -end which means how the back end is supposed to get to send the request, how the front end is supposed to, to receive it, how the UI was supposed to display, what happened if user click on the button to move from one place to another. These are the overall of your application in order for you to write a good test test. And <clears throat> what are the needs? Do you need to support Internet Explorer? Um, anyone here still need to support Internet Explorer 11? Oh, good, no. <laughs> And our Firefox, our Chromium, and so on. Chromium, most, most people have to. 
but Firefox uh, depends. Uh, Safari is another IE, but yeah, we're not talking about Safari. Um, <laughs> prioritizations. What are the prioritizations for your testing? Because, like I say, we have a lot of tests. So either um, if you have, like in my group, we have a lot of tests. We have like a, a almost 8,000 tests to run for just a single project. And so with us, what important is speed. And what important, another thing is that how we can run the test in parallel. And these are the two prioritization when we choose a wooden plan for our testing. So you need to also think what is more important for your project. Just don't follow whatever written on Google because depending on the use case, you'll find that it's more matched to you. And of course, keep the test in order. You have the layer, the, the parameters. So you have unit tests, integrations, and end-to-end. -end. Don't mix them together. I, I've encountered several times that people are trying to do component testing, and they actually test the logic inside the component instead of split them into two. And that caused a lot of trouble because in the end, when we have a bug where something fails, we cannot really figure out which one go wrong because it's all in one chunk. Um, and automate whatever you can, automate it. Don't think that you can do it manually because once the code base grows bigger, you cannot run your manual test locally or manually because you will probably waste your time waiting for it to run. Just automate it and then move on to go to another one. Um, and the next thing is the main course for our talk today, making the writing test simpler. How? By using Playwright. Yo, yep. This, I don't know why they have this logo with the smiley face. Creep me out, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so Playwright is um, more than, huh, I, it's hard to remember the exactly. I'm from Microsoft, so I cannot say the wrong thing about this. <laughs> but anyway, so Playwright is the reliable end-to-end -end testing for modern web app. I would just say it's actually the very good test runner, very fast. What it does give you is it has cross browser plat and platforms, which means you install one, you can use it in a support in every device and on the browser, including Safari out of the box. And it's free, unlike Cypress. Anyone see Cy use Cypress? Ah, you should change to Playwright. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, edit this, don't, don't, don't stream it on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, so. Playwright um, provides a single API, but it supports multiple languages, which means it supports TypeScript, it supports Python, C Sharp, Java, so you can actually use it at the single place for testing for your own your on your projects if you have a lot of different languages in your pro in your um, code base. And it's isolated. Uh, with authentication, which means you can you only need to do authentication one, and it will be safe and it's run for other uh, the whole app. Um, it have a very good tools which we will explore later, which is Cochain Inspector Trace Viewer. Um, hopefully, I'm doing okay, so I can show you more. And parallel testing because isolating, so it allow you to run several tests together. And this saves a lot of time in running. It helps like, reduce the time for testing by half. And that's very important, because I remember before we use Playwright, it took us about a whole day just to run the automation test on the pipeline. After we use Playwright, we cut it by half, so it's only like eight hours. <laughs> Still a lot, but yeah. And lastly, it's fast execu execu uh, executions and have auto wait, meaning you don't have to use set timeout. You don't have to set timeout to wait for the user interactions. It comes automatically, and you can configure it to be to wait for for interactions for uh, how many seconds you want to. And to install it, you have using VS Code. Anyone here using anything other than VS Code? No, no <laughs> Are you raising your hand? <laughs> no. Um, if anyone haven't used VS Code, again, use VS Code. Uh, I, I, it's open source, so don't worry. <laughs> and it's cool. Uh, it have also view viewing. It have also uh, not view viewing. It have extensions. All the extension there. It have Playwright extension there. It's great. 
you can install it, and then you can, after you install it, you just need to install Playwright. But here you can see here we have two different things here, re record and refresh. This is for to record your test for how to generate the next text, which is the code, gen code generator that we're going to explore next. And after you install Playwright, you can choose what browser, what headless browser, what browser you want to support. And that's it. Now, after you install, it will generate, like any other testing framework, it gives you a test folder, a test example to do app. Um, I'm not sure I like that, but never mind. I, I never use to do app. So. And of course, it has a config file where you can define how you want to config your testing pipeline, your workflow. And if you have um, if you have a GitHub, if you enable GitHub workflow, it will also generate a YAM file for the GitHub workflow on com inclusive. That's simple. So that is about Playwright in general. So when you want, let's talk about code chain. Um, code chain is the auto generate test by recording user actions. What does it mean? It actually using AI to record your action interaction with a browser and then generate the test according to that. Talk is, is a lot, so let's take a look. Um, okay, so here, you can see mine? I have a, I have a demo here, building view in Pinia. It's just a pizza store here. And um, here when I'm using, let's say I'm using Playwright code chain, it will auto, it will give me a Chromium uh, browser and an inspector next to it. And now it's have all this, you don't touch this. Now what you need to do is go into this one, copy it, put it right here. Oh, you can see here it's a away page go to. So the moment you start pressing enter, it's already come, um, auto generated. Now next, let's just move it so you can see it's happen on the side. And they really need to fix it because it's not responsive. Anyway, so here you can select any, let's say right here, let's say add to cart. I click, you can see here, it say, <laughs> <laughs> and here you can see they say away bay locator and click on it. So now what next? Well, I will say I want to, because I already asked something on the card, now I want to go to the card and I want to make sure that here is have at least one. No. See, it's, a, it's, a, it's the AI, it's a bit smart, but it's a bit stupid also. I would say, because I want to, <laughs> I want to make sure that this one have a, 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 an, an element. So anyway, so you can see here it generate expected page to have a URL that is navigate from the home page to the cart. When I click one, which means I click the button that have one item inside, and now you can copy all of this. Record, stop the recording, and you can copy all of this and go back to here, open the example spec on this page, and now you have the first, ah, wait. So now you have the first test done. How long, how, how long did it take? Come on, give me some clap here. <laughs> it, like this, you can you can also do a little bit. Let's say I want to make sure that the locator here. Why do I have the locator like this? I want the locator here to be equal to be visible. I think. Um, I actually don't. Oh, expect. Okay. So now, now next run. How we're going to run locally. So you can see here, if you install the extension, it will have a small icon right here, say you can click to run. And then when you click on run, you can have a, pan, a panel here, a side panel, which it will show you on the test what is done inside. So if I go to here and I write um, 
test adding uh, item to cart and move to the uh, cart page. Okay, and now I will just rerun it. Then you can see it suddenly say, so you can see the test, which one test, and you see all the tests nested together organizing. So any, any things that break, you will see immediately right here. Um, so let's make it something break, shall we? So here, if I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to this, I'm going back here and I want to click on this item. So let's just take this item. You can actually inspect the chromium when you are. Um, so I'm going to click on that. Let's say I'm going here. Instead of clicking on this one, I'm just doing like a web page locator and um, image. Um, on T, right? Um, thing like this. Click. Okay. So now, if I click on that, I will expect it to be to fail. And when it's fail, it will show you exactly where it's fail. Oh, I fail because I cannot trigger the query selector. It's not a valid selector. But then I can go here and um, let me see. Where is the inspector? I oh, not here. Never mind. I don't know where the inspector is. Um, okay. So here you can see that it's fail right here, and it also tell you what fail, what run fail, how long will take. Oh, by the way, if you look at the sign here, you can see the number of uh, number of milliseconds it takes. So we know what test that it, um, how much how much time they take, and what test that take longer than the others to go. And this is how will you break it. So now you can fix it, of course. Let's just move back. Okay. What next? So that's it. Um, okay. So we've done this already. Oh, iframe. So in our, uh, in our group, we have a lot of testing with iframe because we build kind of components and it will be reused as a single entity, a single, like a mini app inside another big app. So we have a lot of iframe. And to test iframe is, end-to-end -end test iframe is a little bit troublesome. So for playwright, for testing iframe is pretty simple. Um, let's say I don't want this. I will just stay, go to my website. Okay. Hopefully it works. And let's go back here. Don't know why I lost this one. Okay. Now. <coughs> ah. So now it's in my. Ooh. That's cute. Anyway, so you can hear here, and then I when I click on it, uh, so you can see it's actually know what to take, what frame locator to take, and then inside the iframe, it's also know what locator, which means what e element it need to inspect. And of course, this is kind of um, not so smart because it's click instead of I want to 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 verify that is this button exists, but you can you have the idea how the iframe work right here. And debug, well, you can always debug it by, let's say, by putting a breakpoint here, add a breakpoint, I guess. Oh, no, not the breakpoint right here. And here. And let's see. Oh, here. If you do, I think I can, oh. So play right. Let's see, what do I have here? Debug. Should have the debug options. Yep, so debug mode. <laughs> Why did it? Oh, test. Then you can have a, um, let me see if I can do a debug mode right here. Mm. 
what's going on here. Oh, it stopped right here because I added uh, debug mode. Oh yeah, here you can see it is actually stopped because it's paused because I added the debug mode uh, breakpoint. So you can also use the inspector to play around with it and uh, debug your, the test. Okay, and lastly, view the result. Ah, this is cool. So let's say I will show the result. result. <laughs> Why I never remember the, the name? Show report. Oh, and when, when you click, when you run the command, you can see here we have the show report and you can have all the tests it listed here. It doesn't, it gives you a very simple dashboard. Uh, that's the one of the downside of, uh, of uh, Playwright, that you need to build your own dashboard if you need more than just this. But uh, if you just want to see how it works, uh, whether it's the, which one it fell, so this is, should, should be enough. And okay, we have three minutes. Hopefully, so next, tracer. So to, tracer is what you call rec record the snapshot, the screenshot. Let's say if you have a test that fell and on the client side or when you do the running of the pipeline, not all the time you can verify it. So what Tracer will help you is it will record the, the, the fail test, the whole series, and then you can review it and see which one, uh, which part of which action that caused and what happened in that page that caused the failing test. And how that works, you just need to install, you just need to run the command of playwright show trace. And in the config, you have we try one, which I say that it will retry at least one, only one time. And you can see trace, turn it on on first retry, which means it's only turned on after it's retry. Or you can put it on, which is always retrace, always trace on your test. So let's go here and I will just turn it on because I never got it to work for me from the first try. I don't know, maybe I do something wrong here. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's try. And I want to run the test. Okay. Come on. There's three tests. How long will it take? Okay, so now you can see they have a... You can see they have an attachment here that... Um, <coughs> You can see that it have the trace, uh, the zip file. So now I'll just need to take the zip file, this zip file, and I'll do npm and trace. Wait, this is trace, right? Sorry, trace. Show trace. Show trace. And this it will should open up browser, and here you can see the screenshot. And you can actually see which one fell. Okay, so it couldn't locate the waiting for selector. Selector result visible, and it's have on the lock here. So you can see what lock, uh, what's, what the problem with which lock it is. And you can also inspect it. So basically, it's like a mini, uh, it's like a mini uh, browser. So you can inspect the, I the item here to see which one um, the is problematic. And you can also look at the look at the um, the routing here. It have all the snapshot, so you know what which one locator, which one fell. So it tried to locate something here and it couldn't, so it doesn't work. And this is just um, this is actually the iframe, so you can inspect it. Oh no, it's not an iPhone. It's a depth. Okay, so I went wrong. So it's, it's, you, it's also have a depth tool right here. So you can also debug your own snapshot. And yep, and that's the trace. And, and lastly, go. don't snapshot. So this is the one that you can actually see the snapshot, the snapshot I just showed just now. So you can see the snapshot, you can inspect it, element. And last, the last one before we finish, oh, good. Component test. Know what is component testing? 
uh, we tried component testing before. Okay, anyone here work with React? Oh, you are lying when you say that you work with Vue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I work with both, so I, I, I understand. <laughs> anyway, so we have component testing with React, Vue, and Spell. Uh, forget about Angular, no one cares about Angular. Uh, so it's, it's the only on preview beta right now, but you can try it. What exactly is component testing? It actually allows you not to load the whole web page, but it allows you to test your component as a single component in, in like, it with CSS, with everything, like visually. So how we use it, let's say here, yeah, we can just copy this, compo this file. And then in this one, we just in it, which means we install it. Whether TypeScript and JavaScript, I don't feel like TypeScript right now. And let's say view. Of course, view. <laughs> well, and now you can, okay. So here it will generate for you a folder called Playwright. It's the Playwright folder, which is have the one, a very simple HTML and it will load the index.js and the index.js you can actually ask also import the CSS style if you have some CSS outside of your component um, so it will render correctly and now what you need to do is you go to source and I want to test just the home page so I'm adding a file here called home spec.js uh, JS. Okay. And let's just copy the component. Here you go. Just, no, not this one. Oh, yeah. So I'll just copy one of these. Here. Yeah. And of course, I'm going to copy this. But I do, I'm lazy. And I need to copy one of this also. No. It should be t test. Um, not test. Should be... Ah, where the fuck? Oh yeah, you go. <laughs> well, the name, the naming of the package is too long. I, it's, it's challenging my memory. I have so many things I need to remember, so I don't want to remember it. <laughs> Plus, I have documentation. That's what it's for. Uh, so here I can test it, and I'll just do it like this. Um, oh no, I will just mount it by adding home. Okay. Do I need to put it in JSX? I think so. Probably. Anyway, so here I'll just say home view component. Okay. Uh, away. Yeah. And contain the text. Let's say what the text we have here. I'll just delete this. And uh, text. Welcome to PSS Store. Okay. And that's it. Now let's run this test. Um, yeah. Well, it works. Oh. Now, wait. What? 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 Okay. Uh, wait, now and testing. So this is the component da da da. Containing root. Uh, oh, <sighs> of course. I haven't imported the file. How I expect it to work? And click on it again. No, it's still not working. What's going on here? Okay. Now this is this is some troublesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, maybe I cannot run the normal one. Let's see. <laughs> I cannot what? Invalid end tab. What the Yeah, I think I broke the component. Oh. Why? And the iframe. You see, it tells you exactly where you fell. <laughs> it, does, it does work. It tells you exactly what's wrong with it. Uh, okay, no. 
So no, this one is okay. I just have a problem with the expected thing in the other test. So let's see. We want to show the result. Oh, it's still running. And okay, here you go. So here, this is the component test, and you can see here it's test in Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit, and it just that's it. You, that's the component. You don't need to do the whole page. It's just a component. Um, and it's in preview, so have a lot of bugs, <laughs> as usual. Uh, so anyway, to try it out, you can try it out now. Uh, I believe that the team is already do a very good documentation right now. So yep. So what's next? Lunch. <laughs> um, just what next? Well, we have to plan first, code later, as usual. Everyone know that. Everyone hear that. No one do it. Anyway, try to do it. <laughs> Um, using meaningful locator, you can see here that I do it auto generate the locator for you. But the locator is pretty simple. I'm not saying that it's not smart. It's pretty simple. Like button, the button have a text. But that means if you have several buttons that have the same text, then you do. So yeah, provide some meaningful locator. Don't just assume that it works like this. Copy it. Try to play around with it and edit your locator. And of course, you need to know how to use a selector, HTML selector. Um, component testing, try it. And it will save you a lot of time in testing the whole view in the actual app. Because now you can break your flow into component. In a way, I still don't understand why they do that. The testing sound to me like, inter, um, like unit testing for component. But it's still, we call it end-to-end, -end, so let's just call it end-to-end. -end. Um, yeah, and lastly, write test first, code later. Uh, I, this is something that I found late, uh, recently when I tried to develop a new project, and we have a lot of bugs afterwards. Because when we do, we start with uh, we saying, let's make it work. And then we build on top of what and make it work. We never add any unit tests or stop to add any testing inside it. And in the end, when we actually release it, what we got back is the whole list of bugs that we never think that will happen, but it happened. Um, so yeah, try to write the test first, and then you can really identify how you should write your logic according to what you want the outcome to be. Uh, lastly, if you haven't done accessibility testing, try to integrate Playwright with accessibility testing. S Core is the awesome package. We use it in Microsoft for accessibility. So we combine them together, and this way we have fully coverage for accessibility at least without the screen reader, but with the, with the normal area label and so on. It's pretty simple. And let's have lunch and playwright. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we can have, you can have her ask questions while she eats lunch. That's going to be, uh, <laughs> that's going to be fun. Uh, thanks so much, Maya. Um, now, before we get to the lunch treat, we're going to have another treat from uh, Vonage. Um, if you just want to come up and let us know uh, what, what the treat is. I think I was talking too much about Superbase, so uh, the other sponsors got jealous. <laughs> no. Um, Vonage, uh, yes, maybe tell us a little bit about your treat. OK, OK, uh, before I do that, um, I want to get a free t-shirt, so uh, I have a JavaScript joke, OK? Oh, yes. Yeah, OK. Uh, double XL, OK? Uh. So the joke is, um, how do you deal with JavaScript developers having problems? No one? Oh. That's easy. OK, OK, okay second, second, second joke. <laughs> That's, there's another one. Is that a common joke? Anyway, okay, there's another one. There's another one. Um, how do you uh, help introverted JavaScript developers communicate? No. Okay. Okay. So the 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 the, the answer is you use Vonage. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'll give it to my uh, colleague, Clarice. 